Episode 1 The Richest Delivery Boy On a hot afternoon, the coffee shop on the corner of 4th Street in Sacramento was buzzing with customers. Hazelnut latte for Mr. Pierce! The female barista behind the counter shouted. Here's your change, Mr. Pierce, said the barista, jingling and clanking the coins. Thank you, miss, said the old man dressed in a black three-piece suit. I'm here looking for Kevin. I suppose he works here? Kevin, someone at the counter for you, the lady barista shouted. A young man dressed in his blue work clothes approached the cash counter. Yes, Nina, who is it? Mr. Pierce, Kevin is here. Nina told Pierce as he turned towards Kevin, standing right behind him. Why are you here? A shocked Kevin said. Let's go out and talk. Kevin opened the glass door of the cafe and asked Pierce in a stern voice, What do you want? I want you to come back, Mr. Bennett, said Bob Pierce. You want me to return to the Bennett family? Kevin couldn't believe the audacity Bob Pierce had to ask him this. The unexpected conversation revealed Kevin's menacingly cold expression. Yes, the old man clearly stated that the assets worth $300 million of the Bennett family will all be placed under your control as long as you return to the family. Bob spoke with the utmost respect towards Kevin Bennett. $300 million? Kevin burst into a peal of self-deprecating laughter before heaving a sigh. Oh, the Bennett family does have a lot of money to spare, don't they, Bob? Seeming to have noticed the ridicule in Kevin's words, the old Bob Pierce asked helplessly, Young man, could you possibly still be brooding over the incident that took place three years ago? Taking Kevin's silence as an affirmation, Bob forced out a bitter smile and continued, Kevin, the old man may have indeed been in the wrong during the incident three years ago. Ever since then, however, he has also paid a huge price for that matter. Why don't you give him a second chance? A second chance? Kevin sneered with a hint of ridicule. After all, why should Harvey Bennett get a second chance when he never even gave Kevin's mother that exact option? Having witnessed the death of his mother with his own eyes three years ago, Kevin vowed never to extinguish the burning flame of rage within his heart. Although the Bennett family possessed wealth in abundance, Harvey Bennett refused to pay even a minuscule fraction of that wealth to treat his mother's illness. Despite begging like a dog in front of that despicable fiend, he remained unfazed and held no intentions of saving his mother. Even then, Harvey sought a second chance. Thinking back to that incident, Kevin stood his ground and shook his head with unspeakable ridicule. Could it be that you intend to work as a waiter and delivery boy for your entire life? Bob Pierce sighed and asked after taking notice of Kevin's undying resolve. During these past three years, after leaving the Bennett family, Kevin married into the Wright family as a son-in-law. He lowered his status greatly compared to his original life in the Bennett family. Still, he had even been ostracized and forced to endure the constant ridicule of the Wright family. I would rather remain as a waiter, delivery man, or hell, even a janitor than give up my life entirely, Kevin stated with a faint smile. Bob Pierce replied with a slightly twisted expression. Young man, what are you trying to say? Nothing much, Kevin replied as he shook his head. Mr. Pierce, you may go back now. Tell Harvey and the entire Bennett family that I will return sooner or later. However, I will be doing so for another reason, not because of the wealth. Bob stood petrified in shock as he gazed at Kevin's leaving figure before revealing a conflicted expression. Along the way, Kevin kept pondering over his decision. Ever since he was born, he had been living a comfortable life in the Bennett family. Due to his identity as an illegitimate child, however, he had always been looked down on and disregarded by the family members. Even the family servants would not hesitate to scold and bully him. Kevin originally thought he would keep living as a maggot in the Bennett family until he died. Only until his mother fell ill three years ago did he truly understand that the bastards of the family held no intentions of giving him the chance to be that very maggot. On a certain night, when Kevin's mother fell extremely sick, he knelt in front of the entire family like a dog and pleaded with them to save his mother. However, no one helped the mother and son. 
Instead, everyone turned a blind eye to his pleading words. In the end, his mother passed away from her illness. Witnessing the death of his mother traumatized him for the rest of his childhood days. At that time, he truly understood his place within the Bennett family. From the perspectives of the members of the family, the pair of mother and son were nothing but mere insects that held little to no value. They did not even consider them humans. After his mother's demise, Kevin decided to part ways with the Bennett family. On that day, Kevin swore that he would return to the same family one day and use absolute power to make every Bennett kneel in front of the mother's grave to repent. His resolve, however, was nothing but mere words stated by a young child. On the second day after leaving the Bennett family, Kevin found himself in a predicament as he was chased by a group of thugs with intentions to murder him. If he had not run into Alan Wright by pure coincidence, he would have already been mutilated and turned into a corpse. At that point, it was clear to him that Bennett family sent the thugs. Kevin Bennett was nothing but a mere ant before the gorilla known as the Bennett family. After becoming the son-in-law of the Wright family, Kevin's days gradually began to calm down. Even though he still had to endure the family's mocking gazes, he managed to survive and live on as a human being. While he may have wished to live in peace for the rest of his life, the rain that withered into a small drizzle began pouring once more. Despite their previous failed attempts at murdering him, the Bennett family had come to find him again. To his utmost surprise, the Bennett family offered him the chance to inherit the wealth and become a multi-billionaire. However, in the third generation of the great Bennett family, more than a hundred adult males had the qualifications to inherit the throne. Thus, it would be extremely difficult for an illegitimate child to inherit the Bennett family, no matter how much support he would gather. This was, without a doubt, a plot created against him. After all, how could someone as despised as him in the past suddenly be worthy of inheriting billions? As the saying goes, an opportunity that sounds too good to be true would most likely be too good to be true. Kevin! Just as Kevin was deep in thought, a beautiful woman wearing a white dress suddenly called out his name from a distance. In addition to her delicate features, she also possessed a tall yet slim figure. While her body lingered with a graceful temperament, she stood in the limelight amid the bustling city, looking breathtaking. That woman was Kevin's wife, Claire Wright. Claire, what's wrong? After meeting up with Claire, a gentle smile appeared on Kevin's face. No matter what he had gone through, his mood would, without a doubt, improve as long as Claire existed in his presence. In contrast to his bright smile, Claire revealed a rather cold expression. She only glanced at Kevin before turning around and saying indifferently, Follow me to my aunt's house. It's Thanksgiving. Thanksgiving? Kevin uttered with his mouth wide open. He recalls that Claire had notified him yesterday about the Thanksgiving ceremony. During that ceremony, it was a tradition for everyone in the Wright family to come together. However, Kevin lowered his head and looked at his yellow clothes. He could not help but feel awkward as he had just finished delivering the takeout. Since his schedule was interrupted by the sudden visit of Bob Pierce, he did not have the time to change his clothes. Since Thanksgiving was an important event for the family, he naturally could not participate in such shabby clothes. Claire, can you wait for me while I go home to change? Kevin said in embarrassment. Claire replied with a displeased expression. Why didn't you change beforehand? Didn't I already tell you about the Thanksgiving gathering yesterday? I forgot, Kevin muttered softly as he lowered his head like a child who made a mistake. Forget it. There's no need to change. No one will be paying attention to you anyways. We'll just have to go straight to my aunt's house. Grandpa and the others are already waiting, Claire said impatiently. The longer she talked with Kevin, the more apparent the dissatisfaction in her words grew. After all, how could Kevin forget about such an important matter? Fine. Kevin wanted to say something, but since Claire had already turned around and left, he had no other choice but to follow her. The Wright family was indeed a widely known family in the region. After all, one of their ancestors, Thomas Wright, once held the position of chief advisor to the leader of the Native American tribe. Ever since he founded the Wright family, he had lived through more than 2,000 seasons of spring and autumn. Even though the Wright family had declined significantly in recent years and was no longer as grand as it once was during its former days, no one dared to look down on them. Thanksgiving always remained a time for the Wright family to gather together. When they finally arrived at Claire's aunt's house, 
Kevin noticed that several people had already been waiting inside. Claire took a deep breath and walked towards the main gate. Kevin followed behind, but he was suddenly obstructed by a big hand when he was just about to enter. Stop right there! Kevin, what are you going in for? A young man suddenly shouted. That young man was one of Claire's cousins, Jack Wright. At that moment, he had his arms arrogantly crossed in front of his chest. His sinister intention was written all over his face. Am I not going to be part of family celebrations? Kevin said as he looked at Jack in confusion. Everyone in the Wright family was required to attend the feast. Since he married into the Wright family, he would naturally be considered a part of it. Family? Jack sneered. Which family are you even talking about? The ones inside are Wrights. What does that have to do with you? His mocking words indicated how he saw Kevin as a mere outsider, an unwanted attendee at the Thanksgiving dinner. Jack, what are you trying to say? Claire questioned with a cold expression. Jack shifted his gaze towards Claire and and said cunningly, Nothing much. I was only telling him how outsiders and dogs are not allowed to enter the right family gathering. If the things he said before were nothing but a mere taunt, these words were certainly his attempt at humiliating Kevin Bennett. Despite his ridicule, Kevin, having suffered much greater humiliation than this before, remained unfazed. On the other hand, Claire fumed with rising anger. After all, Kevin was her husband. Kevin is my husband. What right do you have to say that he is an outsider? Your husband? Jack laughed heartily as if he had heard some huge joke. Claire, are you treating this trash as your husband? You've been married for three years, yet you haven't slept with him even once. They had yet to sleep with one another despite being married for three years. Hearing those words, many members of the Wright family revealed mocking grins on their faces. At that moment, their gazes filled with ridicule shot toward Kevin like sharp daggers. They could not comprehend how useless Kevin was to have not slept a single time with a beauty such as Claire on the same bed even once during the past three years. Could it be that something was wrong with that good-for-nothing brat? Claire's expression changed drastically. Indeed, she had been married to Kevin for three years, and let alone going to bed, she had not even held his hand even once. She originally thought that only a small portion of people within the family knew about this matter, but now it seems she could no longer hide that fact. Claire, why don't you go in first? I suddenly remember that I have a takeout to deliver. Kevin muttered and forced out a soft laugh. He could certainly face the ridicule of the Wright family people directly, but he did not want his wife to face the same embarrassment from being associated with him. Noticing how Kevin feigned his response, Claire's heart ached for whatever reason. Even after being married for three years, she had never treated Kevin as her husband. Kevin nevertheless cared for her with his utmost abilities despite being treated so coldly. Whether it was a windy or rainy day, Kevin would always pick her up at work on time. Furthermore, whenever he noticed that she was having a bad day, he would always try his best to brighten up her day with his gentle smile. When standing in her presence, this man would constantly disregard everything thrown at him. He would never show even a slight hint of anger, and he would do whatever he could to cater to her every need. As time went on, she would naturally develop feelings for him. As a layer of mist suddenly clouded Claire's eyes, she could not help but wonder why Kevin would always treat her so well. Kevin took a deep breath and turned around to leave. He knew that if he continued to stand here, he would only be asking for humiliation. However, just as he turned around and was about to walk away, a resolute and decisive voice sounded out from behind him. The two of us will enter together. Kevin suddenly felt a soft and warm touch, grasping his hand upon hearing those words.